I'm going to show you that it is in fact possible that there's absolutely nothing wrong with eating meat. The argument for this will break down as follows. 1. Moral reality is non-existent. 2. Moral statements cannot be true. 3. The statement killing animals is wrong has no truth value. Now, of course, this argument is perfectly sound descriptively, but the second you acknowledge humans have moral value or ought to have moral value, it's no longer valid. However, even though it would seem that this will lead to nihilism, it might not be the case here. For these observations lead us to a position where we are free to carve the morality as we desire and thus we can relinquish veganism once and for all. Are you saying that from this argument we can build to a moral framework that will allow us to arbitrarily exclude animals from it? <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. The problem many non-vegans have with ethical vegans is their arrogance in assuming their moral righteousness in moral questions. If vegans assume moral righteousness, it probably comes from the fact that we apply our morality consistently and carnists don't. For example, Vegan Gains, a popular vegan YouTuber, has said, granted in an ironic fashion, that he is a better person than an omnivore just for the reason of being vegan. Now, I'm inclined to say that he was joking, but if he wasn't, then clearly he's wrong. Veganism does not make you better than someone who isn't vegan. However, if everything else were to be held constant, then yes, vegans are better people. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple. Who is a better person? The one who does kill needlessly or the one who doesn't kill needlessly? Figure it out. Although his statements are an individual case, his online behavior sheds some light on the common arrogance of any given ideological person, be they vegan, communist, fascist, or so on and so forth. They all occasionally have juvenile campaigns or arguments, such as ethical vegans do with meat is murder for one. You can make broad statements about the tendencies of people following certain ideologies, but I'm sure you know that, that in no way makes them wrong. And the statement meat is murder is accurate. You can find non-anthropocentric definitions. It's all very much about the premises one begins their argument with when coming to a conclusion. Thus, it is possible to create theories where eating meat is perfectly fine, while it is also possible to create ones where it is horrendously immoral. The killing of anything is not intrinsically wrong. As far as we know, morality does not exist outside of subjective consciousness. But to structure a society in a way that tries to maximize human flourishing, we can't operate with a nihilistic worldview. We need a system of morals that hinges on the wellness of sentient creatures, and the system should be logically consistent in its deployment. Arbitrary lines should not be drawn between humans and animals, as animals clearly can experience well-being. And if they can experience well-being, we have no consistent reason to deny the moral consideration. I will start with my first argument. I define moral reality as a zone of reality consisting of moral facts, which moral statements can correspond to. Wait, are you speaking prescriptively now? Before you made an argument where the premises stated that moral reality does not exist and that moral statements cannot be true, so it looks like now you're speaking prescriptively. That makes me somewhat suspicious on why you even brought up the first nihilistic argument if you were just going to go to a prescriptive argument uh, later on. That's kind of weird. Why would that even be necessary? It sounds to me like you're going to use that to fall back on later on. If one assumes a moral reality to exist, one would seem to endorse moral objectivism, according to which morality is never changing and independent of humans. This would be the same as claiming that moral statements are as true as mathematical or natural scientific statements. For example, killing is wrong, is and always will be as true as water is composed of H2O. Okay, as far as I know, morality does not exist as observable matter outside of the mind. But once we realize that the moral good is tied to an increase in human or animal well-being, and that the moral bad is tied to a decrease in that well-being, we can objectively say that some people are morally wrong and that some are morally right. All actions are not equally moral. To abandon this idea is to embrace moral anti-realism, according to which there is no moral reality. Accepting this, our meta-ethical position could be described as follows. 1. There is no moral reality. 2. Moral statements try to describe that reality. 3. Therefore, moral statements fail in their attempt to describe that reality. 4. Moral statements are true or untrue based on the correspondence between their descriptions and the state of affairs in that reality. 5. 
killing animals is wrong is a moral statement. Six, therefore, the statement killing animals is wrong has no truth value. It should be noticed that the negation of six would also have no truth value. That is, the statement killing animals is right. As far as I can tell, your argument is valid. But again, it has no prescriptive bearing. The same argument could be used on humans, just replace the word animals with humans. Your argument is true in that descriptively killing is not wrong. How do you draw the line from saying killing animals is neither right nor wrong to somehow saying that killing humans is wrong? We might conclude from this that moral statements are not per se important for us, since they denote nothing, they mean nothing, there are no absolute values, so to speak. Yet in order to function as a society, we need certain rules, we need a contract. The notion of establishing a social contract to secure a functional society was first coined by the English philosopher Thomas Hobbes. <laughs> I smell social contract though coming up. Hobbes thought that people are lonely, cruel and selfish in their state of nature. To Hobbes, a man is a wolf to his fellow man, since one can kill the other at any moment due to the lack of objective morality which would make his actions wrong. Therefore, a contract is needed to secure a more peaceful state of life. Yes, this is where prescriptive ethics come into play. You can't have a nihilistic worldview and expect it to be a world with more well-being in it. People need to be able to exercise business, maybe start a family, and live their life. Although killing one man is not inherently wrong, we must decide for practical purposes that it is wrong. In other words, actions are not wrong based on an objective moral reality, since such a reality does not exist, but they can be considered wrong in the framework of a moral contract made between people. It is noteworthy to add that the signing of this contract never has to take place in reality, of course, but it suffice to see it as a philosophical model of thought. In this contract, people would decide that we believe killing people to be wrong, although it inherently is not. This is purely for practical purposes, as stated earlier. We do not have to, however, decide that killing animals is wrong. This is so because killing animals fits our practical purposes perfectly. If we establish a state which forbids one man from killing another, the state can easily allow killing animals without ending up on a slippery slope to allowing murder. Drawing an arbitrary line between us and animals, excluding them from our moral framework, and then saying the reason is because killing animals fits our practical desires is nonsense. If killing certain humans fit our practical desires, would it then be okay? This is a problem. This is why logical consistency is very much needed when building moral communities. Creating moral systems that operate arbitrarily means that we're essentially saying that we have to be okay with being killed for arbitrary reasons. How can you on one hand say killing animals is fine because it fits our desires, and then object to something like an alien race killing us and using the same exact reasoning? You're holding two contradictory views at the same time. It's absolute nonsense. This requires that we see animals as inferior entities to human beings. It is all a matter of contract. So yes, after all of this, he is saying a social contract though. Would he accept being killed on the grounds that he isn't in someone else's social contract? If he doesn't accept that, how can he also deploy that same argument towards others. This makes morality an intersubjective case which does not have to be problematic. One might for one argue that intersubjective morality has developed in the course of evolution and that there is no reason to give animals the same position with people since there are no objective moral values inherently wrong or right actions or an objective moral reality for that matter. There doesn't have to be an existence of objective morality in order to see a need to include animals in our moral framework. Maintaining logical consistency is the reason. If we can't name a trait in animals that justifies excluding them, the right thing to do would be not to exclude them, neither of which result in seeing animals on the same level as humans. For time's sake, I'm going to cut the video here. He goes on for a little bit longer, but just to say that social contract is a legitimate reason to exclude animals from the moral framework, he gives a secondary argument that hinges on social contract, um, basically failed arguments. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.